Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today, wherever you are. Uh, we hope that you are keeping safe uh, and staying healthy. We are here today for our Ask the Experts panel, where we want to talk to you about accelerating cloud migration with Azure Migrate. Before we get started, here are a few rules of the engagement. So you can use the chat at any point of time to ask questions. Questions will appear to all attendees once they are approved by our online moderators. Uh, experts will be on standby to answer your questions both verbally and via chat determined by the moderator. Uh, and then we also have experts available to provide resources once the, sessions con once the session concludes so that you can learn more and try out all the features that we're going to talk about in today's session. Other things to keep in mind, this session may get recorded. Uh, please help our moderators. Do not spam or post inappropriate comments in the chat. Please, at all times, adhere to the Microsoft Code of Conduct. And with that, let's go ahead and get started and introduce you to your experts. I'm going to invite Bharat Ram Sivaraman, a Principal PM Manager on Azure Migrate, to introduce himself first. Bharat? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Abhishek. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us uh, here today. I'm uh, Bharat Sivaraman, Principal Product Manager on the Azure Migrate product group here at Microsoft, where I lead uh, product management for our uh, Server migration tooling and uh, more recently the app containerization tooling that's uh, been built from the Azure Migrate product group. So looking forward to your questions and looking forward to an engaging conversation. Awesome. And Bharat is also going to be our on-air moderator for this panel. And my name is Abhishek Hemrajani. I'm the group program manager for Azure Migration and Azure Business Continuity. You could talk to me about Azure Migrate, Mover, and maybe the occasional question on Azure Backup and Azure Site Recovery. With that, let's go ahead and get started. Now, Azure Migrate provides a unified toolset for discovery, assessment, and migration. Already available in Azure Migrate is discovery at scale for Windows and Linux servers, agentless dependency mapping, and migration assessments. If you are watching our Ignite sessions this week, you'll also know that we've just announced a preview for integrated discovery and assessment for SQL Server migration to Azure SQL, um, Azure SQL. This could be Azure SQL Managed Instance or Azure SQL Database. We are also announcing general availability for migration assessments for Azure VMware solutions. Azure Migrate is our single hub for data center migration. Announcing this week at Ignite, we've increased our scale for parallel VMware VM migrations to 500 VMs. So you can now set up one or more appliances to replicate pretty much as many VMs as you want to migrate at the same time with Azure Migrate. We've also announced general availability on Azure Migration PowerShell. This is a great way to automate your scale migration projects and enable your migration factory. There is also guidance available on GitHub to access sample migration factory scripts. You can also start customizing your VM migration flows with resource tagging and custom naming conventions for target artifacts. We've also invested in speed and security, now available private endpoint support uh, with replication over Express Route. And for our Azure Migrate Hub scenario, Zerto is now a new integrated partner for Azure Migrate. And when it comes to your migration options for modernization, you can always migrate your web apps to Azure App Service. We'd love to talk to you more about it during this panel. We are also announcing the public preview of app containerization, which lets you migrate your ASP.NET and Java web apps over to a containers running on AKS. We are also announcing inline migration to Azure SQL using the Azure Data Studio. You can also migrate Oracle databases to Azure Database for PostgreSQL, and then MySQL database migration to Azure Database for MySQL. Also, our Azure migration program is very soon expanding to support app modernization scenarios. We'd be happy to talk to you more about uh, that during the panel. So I'm going to get us started. There are some questions to inspire the conversation on your screen, but I'm going to do a quick check with Bharat if there are any questions already flowing in or what would he like to talk about first? Yeah, Abhishek. Well, we uh, wait for our audience to kind of warm up and start, wait for the questions to start flowing in. Uh, you spoke about the briefly about the uh, work that's happening in Azure Migrate on uh, discovery and assessment for SQL. I know that's I know that's one of the big announcements uh, happening this ignite. So why don't you give our audience uh, a little bit more of a flavor of that? Tell us a little bit more about uh, what that is. Oh, absolutely. So Azure Migrate does a great job of at scale discovery for Windows and Linux server. Once you set up the Azure Migrate appliance, you can discover up to 10,000 virtual machines at one go. You can also perform software inventory that helps you understand the different pieces of software, roles and features that are configured on your virtual machines. 
You can also use Azure Migrate to turn on agentless dependency analysis for up to 1000 servers at the same time. What we've heard from customers is that Azure Migrate does a great job for migration over to Azure VMs and customers were looking for that exact same approach for migration assessments for Azure SQL. This could be SQL managed instance or SQL database. To address that customer need, what we've done now is at scale discovery for SQL Server. So when the Azure Migrate appliance is being configured, if you choose to provide us your Windows or SQL authentication credentials, we'll be able to automatically discover your SQL Server estate. On servers where you have multiple instances, we'll be able to detect that as well. We'll be able to detect the different SQL versions, the SQL additions, the different user databases, and the compatibility level for them. Once that discovery has come in, we are able to actually discover 6,000 databases using the same Azure Migrate appliance. We'll also be able to let you create assessments. These assessments could be for SQL MI or SQL DB, or you could ask us to recommend which one is the right target for your SQL databases. Assessments will include performance history, right sizing, recommendation of the appropriate service tier, and also cost recommendations. It's a great way for you to start thinking about Azure SQL as the right platform for your migration scenarios. Now again, this is something that's going preview this week. Uh, towards the end of this panel, I'll queue up some resources for you to watch all of this in demo and try it out for yourself in an Azure region that supports Azure Migrate right now. Back to you, Bharat. Awesome, awesome. Uh, thanks, thanks, Abhishek. Uh, so we're seeing some questions flow in. I'm uh, trying to combine some of these questions. Is another popular one that I've heard a few times. Uh, so hopefully you can help us with this as well. So this is about uh, Azure VMware solution and uh, uh, any any guidance that we can provide on uh, how do you think about uh, migrating to Azure VMware solution versus uh, this Azure virtual machines and uh, how Azure Migrate can help there? Absolutely, that's a great question. One that our customers routinely ask us. I think the choice between going to Azure VMware solution or using Azure IaaS service natively in the cloud is a choice that you make based on what your VMware strategy is. If you are a VMware customer and you plan to stay on the VMware hypervisor platform but do want to start thinking of Azure as an extension of your on-prem data center, AVS is a great option. You get the same stack parity that you're used to with your on-prem VMware deployments in the cloud in a very secure, robust uh, service offering that is AVS. So what we've done with Azure Migrate and AVS is that when you discover your VMware VMs, the same 10,000 VMs that I just spoke about as part of Azure Migrate Discovery, you could evaluate them side by side for if you want to migrate them over to VMs running in Azure Infrastructure Service, or if you'd like a dedicated host offering like AVS in the cloud. So you could create side by side assessments and determine what the right treatment should be for that particular set of VM that you want to migrate. Once you've looked at the discovery and the assessment and have decided which way you want to go, you can use VMware's HCX offering, which is integrated with our AVS bundled offering, and you can perform the migrations over to AVS. Uh, over time, we'd love to learn more on how you'd like us to improve the overall migration journey for AVS, but currently the recommendation is discover and assess with Azure Migrate and migrate with VMware HCX over to AVS. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Abhishek. And I see the, the questions are coming in thick and fast. Uh, do keep them coming. There's uh, one more question I'd like to kind of uh, throw your way, Abhishek, before I actually pick up one and answer it myself. So this question is on is on uh, specifically on Moware, uh, and the question is uh, is Moware a native tool now, or does it need to be paid for? So hopefully you can talk a little bit about uh, options with with Moware and and our roadmap uh, of how we plan to uh, integrate some of the functionality. Absolutely. Well, Moware is native to Microsoft in that that it runs on Microsoft subscription and has the best of Microsoft security, privacy and fundamentals philosophy already coded into it. So our effort over the last one and a half years since we acquired Moware is to make sure that customers receive the exact same level of compliance that they receive with any Azure service. It does not, however, become available through the Azure portal. Moware is offered through its own portal, but it runs natively on Azure across Azure regions to meet capacity that our customers uh, require Moware to provide. Uh, in terms of how you can become how you can access Moware, Moware is currently available through our worldwide solutions assessment program. You can look it up online. If you are eligible for solutions assessment and you can work with a partner that is already on in, uh, onboarded to our solutions assessment program, 
uh, the Moware toolkit and the solutions assessment become available for free to our customers. So customers never pay, uh, but you have to be eligible for the solutions assessment program and we'll queue up the resource on how you can go learn more about solutions assessment. Uh, in the long term, uh, our plan is to take bits and pieces of Moware which appeal to our customers and our partners and make them available natively in Azure Migrate. Uh, in fact, the, uh, the capability that I just spoke about, Azure SQL, uh, MI and DB assessments, in many ways what we've done is we've taken some of the investments that we already had in Moware, some of the investments that we already had in tools like Data Migration Assistant and built all of that natively uh, into Azure Migrate. Uh, in terms of the future, we expect to standardize on Azure Migrate, but for now, both tools are available. Both are great tools, both are supported, uh, and we'd be happy to unlock the option for you based on what you're eligible for. Bharat, back to you. Thanks, thanks, Abhishek. Uh, so this is a question here on uh, server migration that I kind of want to go ahead and take myself. So this question is, uh, how does scale out work in the in Azure Migrate appliance for VMware? So this is in the context of uh, the agentless migration of VMware virtual machines to Azure option that's uh, part of the Azure Migrate server migration tool. So we have uh, this, with the Azure Migrate server migration tool, currently the uh, agentless migration option lets you replicate up to 300 virtual machines simultaneously from a single uh, vCenter server that's managing your VMware virtual machines. And uh, we have uh, hundreds of customers uh, that have migrated uh, many, many apps uh, over over short periods of months using uh, using the uh, this this uh, tool, but uh, one of the things that we constantly keep getting asked about is uh, how can I improve my velocity further and how do I kind of use this tool to get to thousand VMs and better velo uh, better velocities of migration per month, and which is why we kind of introduced this uh, additional option here uh, to let you execute your migration projects faster. Uh, so what we've done with the scale out appliance is uh, for agentless VMA migrations, in addition to your Azure Migrate appliance that you used to discover your VMware environment, uh, when it comes to migration, you can scale out by adding additional units of the Azure Migrate appliance or specifically a scale out unit of the Azure Migrate appliance. These multiple units can work in conjunction to help you migrate uh, or replicate your virtual machines to migrate them into Azure. With the scale out option, we currently support uh, currently added support for one scale out to go with your primary Azure Migrate appliance and have bumped up the limit to let you uh, replicate up to 500 virtual machines at uh, at one point of time concurrently from a single vCenter server. Uh, we have plans to move that up to let you support uh, up to 1000 VMs being replicated together at once uh, pretty soon. Now, not only uh, not only have we made investments in the scale out appliance to improve the migration scale. Uh, that has to kind of go hand in hand with other enhancements to help you uh, exercise the, the migration at that kind of scale. And that is where a lot of our investments in the automation capabilities come in as well. Abhishek spoke uh, briefly about uh, the general availability of the PowerShell module for Azure Migrate. Uh, so with the PowerShell module for Azure Migrate, you can actually automate a lot of these uh, migrations in a migration factory model. And we have some very good resources on GitHub that kind of show you samples of how you can do that with, uh, with, the, uh, with the Azure Migrate tooling. So, so that is a little bit about uh, some of the uh, scale work that we're doing on the migration tooling. I want to quickly take uh, one other question before I hand it back over to you, Abhishek. So there's a question on uh, can we use Azure Migrate to move from uh, one cloud, specifically AWS in this case, uh, into Azure? And uh, the answer is uh, yes, absolutely yes. Uh, all of the migration tooling in the Azure Migrate portfolio of tools work uh, across uh, uh, clouds, so you may be deployed on premises in your own data center, maybe deployed on a hosted cloud elsewhere, or maybe running virtualized on any other public cloud, including AWS and GCP. Uh, the tools can help you across both the planning as well as the migration phases uh, to execute those migrations into Azure. So if you're running on virtual machines on AWS, you can absolutely use the server, uh, the assessment tooling as well as the server migration tooling to move those virtual machines into Azure. And similarly for other workloads as well, if you're using databases and such, uh, the tools that are included in Azure Migrate can uh, help you exercise uh, those migration scenarios as well. So most certainly, yes. Awesome, All right. Bharat, appreciate, appreciate you taking those questions. The one thing that I'd, I'd love to add uh, is that what Bharat just mentioned about the server migration scale out, uh, I think the more interesting part there, Bharat, we should add is that uh, our scale tests show that for representative customer topologies, those 500 VMs can be replicated and migrated with production cutover to Azure within five to seven days based on the network bandwidth that you may have available. So if you have an awesome express route circuit, that 500 VM workload can go within a week. That can help you achieve over 2000 VM 
uh, velocity over month. Uh, and we plan to make it 1000 per week to let you get to 4000. So we'd love for you to be able to migrate that kind of uh, payload to the cloud every month. Uh, and we'd be happy to keep expanding uh, the service scale support that we have available. Awesome, thank you. Thank you, Abhishek. Uh, there's a question uh, here on, uh, so so let me read out the question. The question is, uh, in a complex retail environment, it is not uh, as a simple lift and shift with Azure Migrate as called out with Azure VMs, especially a lot of legacy apps with complex middleware integration. How do you pr propose to help determine the migration grouping, please? So can we talk a little bit about uh, how uh, the discovery and uh, dependency capabilities in Azure Migrate can help with uh, identifying groups and uh, our plans there? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, the agentless dependency mapping feature that we've enabled is for that exact same reason. Over time, customers have you know legacy data center and legacy applications that you know quite frankly none of us even know that they exist at times. Uh, and that's where dependency analysis does a great job. If you start from your VMware environment, so long as uh, the appliance is able to get visibility into a few servers. It can start determining what network paths seem to be originating across the different servers. Now, if all of the servers that are part of this entire legacy application are somehow managed by VMware, we'll be able to tell you exactly the host name, the process, and the different network paths that originate and terminate on different servers. But let's say that you have some servers that are not typically managed by VMware, but are part of your end-to-end -end infrastructure. We'll still be able to tell you what IP and port connections are originating across the network. Uh, very soon, we'll also expand that capability to natively cover bare metal servers and Hyper-V VMs. That agentless piece of tech is currently available only for VMware. Of course, you can also use the agent-based dependency mapping with service map that will allow you to do uh, all of those capabilities. Now, in terms of grouping, the approach that works right now is that once you've uh, turned on dependency mapping and you can turn it on for 1000 VMs at the same time and we'll profile them every five minutes for network paths, uh, you can export out all of that data into a first class dependency mapping report. Also available on GitHub, we'll queue up the resource, uh, is a Power BI utility that helps you visualize all of these network and process uh, paths to almost create groupings that can tell you where are the different islands within your uh, data center and which which set of servers may be related either as one application or a multi-application workload that you may be running uh, and that capability is available over time what we want to do and we'd love to learn more so whoever asked that question if you could queue in your suggestion on chat we also want to think about automatic grouping like would you find it valuable for us to maybe take some of those hints and automatically recommend that these seem like the ideal waves that you should be looking at as part of the migration. That is something that the PMs on my team are exploring, but you know, we, if, we, if we hear more from customers, either via user voice or through this chat, we'd be happy to go and investigate that more. Excellent. Back to you, Bharat. Thank you, Shik. So this is a follow-up question on, uh, on uh, the SQL assessment options that we spoke about earlier. Uh, so the question is: Is the is the new SQL assessment on par with the with the data migration assistant? So can you talk to that a little bit? So I you know I think my friends from the data migration assistant team are online, and I hope they'll agree with me because they helped us build it together. I think it does. It's not just on par. It it does a much better job than the data migration assistant. The good thing is that the team that wrote data migration assistant helped us build it. So we built it together between the Azure data and the Azure compute teams within Microsoft. The other thing that we've done is that data migration assistant typically gave you readiness information that based on the compatibility level of your databases, which ones are ready for MI, which ones are ready for database. Uh, the skew mapping information, cost projection information was still not to the fidelity that we typically have within Azure Migrate for AVS or VMs. As part of this project, all of those capabilities have also been captured. The other most important thing is at scale discovery. With data migration assistant, you needed to provide which SQL server are you profiling. In this case, with Azure Migrate, you basically point it to your VMware environment. We'll tell you where all SQL is running if you provide us uh, authorization to discover it for you. We'll also be able to tell you what instances and then the databases on them. Uh, and the best part is when we are profiling the database, just like we do for VMs, we are using a continuous discovery approach and a continuous profiling approach. So every 30 seconds, we are able to track the performance of the database to give you a recommendation, which is not just based on a point in time measurement, 
but either on a one day or a seven day or a 30 day window that you can select from the Azure Migrate portal. So I think it's the best of data migration assistant intersected with Azure Migrate and really made uh, useful in the context of the type of migration projects you'd like to execute for SQL. That's fantastic. Thanks, Abhishek. So there are a few questions uh, specifically in the Azure migration program, and uh, I do want to see if we can kind of take some of those and also invite Anant, uh, who's on the call, to kind of uh, help answer some of that. So the question is on the scope of the AMP program itself. Specifically here, uh, it asks about uh, the, do we have uh, this, this, uh, the tooling and the program scope included uh, elements such as uh, network services migration, DN DNS, DHCP, firewall, etc. Uh, but Anand, could you talk uh, a little bit more specifically to the scope of the AMP uh, program itself and the kind of projects that's uh, that's included in AMP as well as uh, some of the updates that I know is coming up uh, very soon. Sure. Um, I hope I'm audible here. Uh, am I, Bharat? Yes, yes, Anand, we can hear you. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, thanks for the question. Um, we we'll asked it. Uh, so first of all, uh, uh, Abhishek and Bharat spoke about our tool sets called Azure Migrate, right? So Azure Migration Program is a program that brings together our mix of investments uh, across tool sets, across uh, prescriptive best practice guidance, uh, digital resources, and expert help from our Azure engineers as well as qualified partners, uh, you know, so that our customers get the right mix of help. Uh, at every stage of the journey, right? And more specifically, the type of projects that we are seeing uh, in AMP include the following. The first bucket is around data center infrastructure migration, right? And if you think of it, it includes workloads like Windows Server migration, uh, Linux migration, and SQL Server migration, right? It also includes some of the uh, things that you said, right? Things like uh, DHCP, uh, DNS. A lot of those are virtualized and running on premises and VMs. A lot of customers choose to run them uh, in a virtualized format in Azure IaaS, right? A lot of them run on Windows Server roles, right? So that's part of a typical infrastructure migration that we see in AMP. Uh, next bucket of projects that we see in AMP is uh, just data migration or database migration. Right? This includes things like SQL Server or even open source database like MySQL or PostgreSQL, right? which host a lot of Linux based uh, workloads in the backend. Uh, yet, a very popular uh, category of projects that we are seeing is Windows Virtual Desktop. Right, A lot of uh, you are looking to virtualize your desktop infrastructure uh, running on Windows 10, say on premises, and we have a great solution called Windows Virtual Desktop on Azure. Right, which can get you the best of Windows 10 experiences on Azure uh, in a in a multi-session environment if you choose. Right, so WVD is a very very popular workload in today's remote environment. Uh, and then last uh, but not the least, uh, we are seeing a lot of customers bring their web apps uh, over to uh, to be modernized and migrated to Azure. Uh, these could be .NET apps, uh, and more uh, recently uh, this week. Uh, we are announcing that we're expanding uh, AMP to include support for a variety of apps, be it uh, you know LAMP stack or Java apps, uh, you know your usual PHP, Python, Perl, all of that, uh, along with MySQL and PostgreSQL on the back end as well. So overall, right, AMP is uh, designed to support a variety of infrastructure, virtual desktop, uh, and apps and data modernization scenarios. So that covers the broad gamut gamut of uh, migration and modernization needs. Bharat, does that uh, address the question? I believe it does, Anath. Uh, thank you so much. All right, uh, so for the next question, I'm actually going to combine a couple of questions and, and throw that your way, Abhishek. So uh, what are the driving factors to include in a questionnaire as part of an assessment to determine more groups for applications? Uh, are, is there any documentation or site that we can refer to for lessons learned from organizations who've done this in the past and have had success? Uh, and uh, similarly, are there guides that we could uh, use to help with the migration decision from a technical security business criteria standpoint, etc.? So uh, if you could help address that. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for taking the questions in between. It's giving me time to sip on my cup of tea. It's afternoon in India where I am based, so I'm, I'm enjoying this conversation. Uh, in terms of our guidance and our recommendation, uh, the resource that you should all be aware about is the Microsoft Cloud Adoption Framework for Azure. Uh, over the years, the numbers of projects that we've executed, thousands and thousands of projects at scale, at different scale, uh, the best practices and guidances have gone into building the Cloud Adoption Framework. 
Uh, the cloud adoption framework will give you a guiding framework to think about organizational issue, architectural issues, uh, motivation issues for migration. How do you decide between migrations and modernization or going all in on cloud native uh, development in Azure? And then also executing those migration. Even some of the assets on how to create a migration checklist, how to look at your assessment data, how to figure out the low hanging fruits that you should be optimizing and executing on first. That guidance is all well captured and encapsulated in the cloud adoption framework. The other often overlooked part of a migration project is management. You've, you are used to running your applications in your data center over multiple years, which also means that they are managed very effectively. As you migrate to the cloud, you're also in many ways migrating your management approach to the cloud. Uh, cloud adoption framework includes coverage for how do you think about operations on day zero and how do you think about operations on day 100? How do you think about governance and security in the cloud? So it's a great asset that I strongly recommend that you uh, take a look at. It can be a fantastic read uh, if you have the time to go through uh, the amazing amount of information that we've collated. Uh, also another great resource is the well-architected framework. It's pretty much uh, guidance that you can start using programmatically to create the first set of landing zones in Azure uh, where you can start migrating your applications into. Again, Works is a great way to look at how things work and then optimize it and customize it for the way your org needs uh, the architectural foundations in Azure to be. So I would say Cloud Adoption Framework and the Well Architected Framework are both great resources that our customers should be aware about as they're thinking about Azure uh, for cloud migrations. Awesome. Thank you, Abhishek. Uh, so question that I want to take quickly. This is on um, can I migrate uh, VMs with SQL Server standalone directly using Azure Migrate with server migration and uh, not using the data migration service? If I want to migrate only the database to a new VM server in Azure, the answer is yes, you can absolutely do that. Uh, the server migration tool can help you move your standalone databases uh, into virtual machines in Azure. Um, just looking to see what uh, what other questions, popular questions uh, we've uh, received? Um, I see, I see a few few questions around uh, you know application patterns, modernization, etc. So maybe I can talk a little bit about uh, modernization options when it comes to uh, migrating apps into into Azure. So when you look at modernization projects, uh, especially app modernization projects, I think you really need to look at what's, what's driving these projects. So one point of view is uh, where a business application requirement is essentially driving uh, changes to the application or the way the application is architected. And typically in those cases, we've seen customers uh, refactor or rewrite the application to make use of modern application paradigms uh, to achieve specific outcomes for that particular application itself. Uh, but on the other, other hand, we've also seen a lot of modernization projects where really the goals are slightly uh, different, more infrastructure driven considerations such as uh, better uh, management of my infrastructure, simplified management of my infrastructure, better governance, etc. And uh, for these cases as well, uh, we have a great set of options for you to kind of run your applications or uh, in, in, in Azure. Uh, one great option that I do want to kind of talk about is the Azure App Service, which is a purposeful platform to help you run your web-based applications. So if you're looking to move a lot of your web-based applications and simplify management for them, Azure App Service can be a great choice. The App Service Migration Assistant tooling that we have uh, built into Azure Migrate is a, is a great tool that can help you simplify a lot of the a lot of the migrations into, into Azure app service for your web apps, be it running a .NET, Java, PHP, a lot of the most common frameworks. Uh, on the other hand, from an infrastructure standpoint, the other thing that we were seeing is uh, a lot of customers are now kind of uh, pivoting on containers and specifically Kubernetes for their infrastructure management. So for those for these set of customers who are kind of already writing newer age apps uh, and hosting them on uh, uh, Kubernetes and managed container platforms, Azure Kubernetes service can be a great choice. So typically the thought process uh, of migrating apps to containers is to kind of rewrite them, but not, not all apps need to necessarily be rewritten to get some of the value of uh, this infrastructure consolidation. Uh, for a whole set of apps, it may be possible to simply repackage, at least as a first step, uh, the application to containers and run them on, on Kubernetes without necessarily rewriting the entire app. And that's where our uh, new app containerization tool from Azure Migrate comes in. Uh, the tool is uh, currently in preview and helps you take your existing ASP.NET and uh, Java based web applications uh, and repackage those applications into a container image without necessarily having to make code changes, essentially using what I call a point and containerized approach and uh, can also help you deploy that application over into Azure Kubernetes service. Uh, not, not only does it help you containerize and deploy the application into AKS, 
Uh, a lot of the intermediate artifacts that are generated in that templatized process are uh, downloadable and reusable for your uh, data operations as you make updates to the application. So you can actually pick them up and even hook them up to a CI/CD pipeline that you use to run deployments and management uh, for your applications. So those are some of the investments that we're making from a tooling standpoint on uh, on uh, choices to help you uh, also modernize applications as you migrate them, which which is a great trigger as well to look at some of these considerations. And, and that's uh, awesome. Sorry, uh, Bharat, no, no, I think no, 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 no. coming up to time. I, I would love for our audience to get access to the resources. So on the slide right now, uh, your key migration resources, check out azure.com migration, azure.com AMP or AMP. Also try out the smart tool. Great way for you to start figuring out your migration readiness across your organization and then also start migrating with aka.ms Azure Migrate. Uh, if you've enjoyed Ignite, uh, there is a, a dedicated migration and modernization event coming up in April. It's our cloud migration and modernization with Azure, which will help you build skills and resilience to navigate your cloud growth. Uh, that short link is on your screen. And then before we end, here are a few sessions at Ignite 2021, which would do a great job of capturing everything that we've spoken about. So the app containerization piece that Bharat was just talking about, Check out that first link. You will see a demo by Bharat in that session that Erin Chappell hosted on what's new with Microsoft Azure infrastructure. Also check out our on-demand session that's hosted by Jeremy Winter on resiliency and growth in uncertain times with Azure migration and modernization. You'll see an end-to-end -end demo, a quick demo of how the SQL migration capability works. And if you are available tomorrow, please join our Microsoft Mechanics live session hosted by me with Jeremy Chapman, where I'll talk to you about new unified tools for discovering and assessing databases, .NET apps and VMs. That's going to give you a fantastic end-to-end -end walkthrough of what the um, SQL scenario looks like. So those are your links. Uh, with that, I appreciate the time that you've spent with us today. Hope you're having a great Ignite uh, and see you soon uh, in our migration and modernization digital event in April. Thank you.